This is everything you need to know about the Epson LS300 Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector. Let's get started. When you first look at the LS300, it doesn't really look like a good projector that you could use, even though it's like $2,000, $3,000. But the more close up like you look at it, there's a warning label here. It's hit, the sound is by Yamaha, three LCD laser light source, high definition resolution, HDMI. And here itself is actually like the main thing, the most important thing to project on this 100 inch screen. So it can project from 100 inches up to 120 inches. So in between that range, it can project at just around 12 inches away from the screen itself. So these three dots near the light source is actually your sensors right here, right here, and right here. This is to like let you know and block the laser as soon as possible from getting into your child's eye, your own eye, or even if you forget like whoever's eye it might be because again, this is a laser light source and it can damage your eyes. So right inside is actually the lens, things like that, that would reflect, again, it's an ultra throw, so it would just reflect straight back onto the screen at like 12 inches or less. It's crazy. There's not much to see on the left side of the projector, but if you look at the front, this is the sound bar by Yamaha. So we are going to actually test it out today. I had tested it before, like many weeks before with my cousins to make sure that it's actually like really well performed and it performs so well. So I, so I can't wait for you to hear how it sounds. I know it's gonna go through this other microphone. So it might sound good on your end, but the only best way to figure out how it actually sounds like is to go to your local Best Buy. Not to mention, there's also a little sensory light right here, so when it is turned on, it will let you know with this light. On the right hand side of the projector, you will see the on off button, the turn off laser switch, the Bluetooth. So with Bluetooth, you're able to actually just use a speaker right in front without the laser. I find that really cool. And these two buttons is basically your volume. It's to make sure like if you want to increase your volume, then you're able to increase your volume with this plus button. If you want to decrease the volume, just click on the minus button. So right here is our focus tab area. Well, yeah, you gotta remove that. And this is basically your focus. So there's no, like, there's not that many options for tweaking because as you would do it remotely. But right inside, this will allow you to choose how, like, focused you want your image to be. So it can be crystal clear and sharp. Not too far from the focus tab, you will see this little tab here to your right. Now what this tab does is actually so you can change your air filter and see a little bit of the insides, but most importantly for the air filter itself. Let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, so in order to open this tab up, all you have to do is go to your, your right and then it will just open it up and you can see that it's just the air filter inside. You can slide it out all the way, you can slide it back in and then just to lock it up, you just put it back up. Yeah. On the back, you'll find a few more air fans, like right here, here on the sides, things like that. And right below, right here, is actually where you put in the plug, which looks like that white plug right there. And the rest of the ports that you have options to is USB-A, HDMI 2, ARC, HDMI 1, service, and optical out. And there's also a little sticker that will say what model you have, just in case you forget in the future. This projector does come with a remote, Android TV, a Google Assistant, and a whole bunch of these papers. Not this USB though, that's my test USB. And basically with these papers, it's like register now, this is how you do it, there's things like that, but you got me, so let's go do it. Here's a little up close of what the remote looks like. Basically the power button, YouTube apps, Bluetooth, this source button, up, down, whatever that is, enter, uh, back, all that stuff that you usually have. And the batteries that it usually takes is, well, it's AAA. So they do give you batteries for the AAA, but you do need to change it out once in a while. I mean, it's still new when I got it, so I don't know how long it will be, but I'm thinking about one to three years because it is a remote. Okay, so let's go ahead and set it up right here. So first I need to put this about like, well, what you want to start with first is have it very up close to your screen. And let's go ahead and plug it in. Let's go ahead and plug it in. And then with my remote, I'm basically gonna tell the sensor, but this this is also Bluetooth too, keep that in mind. I could just press on, like, there you go. The status light is now turning on right here. And it's gonna start showing it like this, which I would recommend you to do because when it's ultra short throw, it's a little bit harder to calculate, not gonna lie, but it's worth it. 
So as you can see right here, it is not focused because I set it there. But the first thing that you have to do is adjust your projector to the right spot to fit your screen. So this is 100 inches, so I'm gonna make it fit 100 inches. And in order for it to like retrofit to your screen too, you will need to also press on this button that will actually let you um, calibrate your screen, as you can see. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this is what we currently have for our calibration. As you can see, this is far away from the first corner. So I'm gonna back it up until it can fit on each corner. Okay, so I just got done calibrating each one of these corners right here. I know it might look a little sloppy or floppy because this is a demo video, things like that. But this is what it looks like when it is running. So right here on the front, you see that that symbol, well, the light is blue. It would tell you that it's actually actively running. And right from the side view right here, I can't go in front because it uses laser. That is pointing directly at the screen because usually, usually other projectors have to project from very far, but this one just has to project from the floor. That's crazy. Okay, so once I am done with the calibration, which took about eight minutes, a little bit longer than I liked to, but I mean, it's laser, so it's very precise specifically. So if I click on the back button right here, it'll bring me to the home page. Now, when you first enter, you basically will be greeted with this same page. It's just that it won't be filled that well. So with the options that you have available, you will see that there is home, live, shop, discover, and apps. Now you can only get access to YouTube and everything else if you are logged in, but for YouTube, you don't specifically have to be logged in, but it is preferred that you are logged in so you could download apps. So from the looks of this, this is Android TV and Google Chromecast, more specifically a Google Chromecast. So if I go here, what's different about this is that you have to actually go to the Epson online meetings if you have it like powered by Zoom and you can remove it from favorites. That's actually good. I thought like you can't actually remove it, but that is good. Right here, it's a projector setting, so you can click on this in the menu, or you can click on this little settings icon right above this button. So I'll click on this button first so you can know what it does. It'll basically just turn off the lasers. So if I press it again, it'll turn on. Now this button specifically will turn to your settings. So your projector settings is picture, sound, display, settings, and information. So if we go to picture, there is a color mode. In each color mode, there's dynamic, vivid, bright cinema, cinema, and natural. So I have all of the lights inside of my room turned on right now, and it's performing really well. The camera can't really like tell you how well it looks, but it's like, it's performing really well from just my own eyes. I'm not getting paid any for any of this, so. Just trust me with that. So in picture, color mode, there's dynamic, which is the current view. If we go to vivid, it looks like that. The fan's changing a little. Bright cinema, looks like that. Cinema is a little bit more dimmed down. So if I actually turn off like the, I don't know what it's called, some of the lights, it's actually more like dimmed down in lumens or natural, which I don't really like the look. So I will actually just go for a dynamic. And the light output, you can adjust in all of them. So I set mine to 50. Seeing adaptive gamma, I set that to 10. And you can have custom settings like brightness, contrast, saturation, tint, sharpness. For brightness though, I don't really think that should play much because it's already bright, isn't it? I mean, you can make it brighter if you want, but it might like hurt the lifespan of the projector itself. There is color temperature, so you can make it colder. You can make it warmer, but we'll set it in at seven. High dynamic contrast, high speed, normal, or off. I just set mine on high speed. Noise reduction, that's like fans, things like that. So I have it on strong. If you have it on weak, it's, well, it depends on how, how much the CPU is handling inside of it. Detail enhancement, I set mine to 30. It should be like that by default. Aspect ratio is normal, or you could go full, or you could go zoom, but I don't see a difference in any, so I just put in normal. 
It's in my video range. I currently have it on auto. So if you have something inside, like plugged in, not inside, plugged in, you can set it to auto, full, or limited. I honestly have no idea what that controls with auto, full, and limited, but it's just an option available. Now let's go to sound. In sound, you have the sound mode. So this is currently set onto theater. And there's TV, studio, stadium, concert, and karaoke mode. I find at most theater to sound amazing. Karaoke mode is even louder than theater mode. Now with studio, stadium, and concert, they actually do sound like that. So even though that they are named like that, don't don't get like all I don't know. There's some other random term for it. But if there's TV, studio, stadium, and concert, it does awesome for all these options. There is virtual sound on here, so there's like high, low, and off. So if you turn it off, basically it would turn off surround sound. So I like virtual surround because it sounds like surround sound. Clear voice, high, low, off. I have mine on high. Auto loudness is an audio, bass extension, so forth. Basically what auto loudness is and virtual surround is, it's almost like if you have like a Sonos speaker or something, it's almost like that, but inside of a projector you're using Yamaha. Sound space, center, or you can switch it to the right or only on the right you could hear it. So I can't hear it now. Now if I click it to the center, I could hear it. Now if I go to the left, now literally like, it's louder to the left. Left, right, stereo, things like that. Sound output advice, you have the option for speaker or ARC. ARC is through HDMI, which is your HDMI 1 port. You know, sound, your sound output format is PCM or auto. Your audio output latency, so that's like how delayed you want your sound to be, that's currently at zero. If we go to display, you can see that this is the corner adjustment, aka calibration. So if I click on change, it's basically the calibration that we just did earlier. Or you could do a reset, which will completely reset the screen back to its original mode. Now here in zoom, I could like, like if I want it to be smaller, I could make it smaller. If I want to make it larger, I could make it larger. So currently that's at 100%. The one with the less distortion I see is 85% because that looks really good. But I will set mine to 100% for this video. Now, if we go into our next setting, which is a motion sensor. Now there's also image shift. Image shift again is also like corner adjustment. There's not really much of a difference. So if I go back down, yeah, it's not gonna give me an option for image shift. Now let's go to the motion sensor. Pretty much what this does is if you have a kid, like, like I'm, I'm so far away and I'm so far away and it's still going. I'm like right here, yeah. Now if I go into the settings and I go to display again, and I disable motion sensor. Well, you got to be careful because no matter how close I am, like I'm literally, my hand is literally right in front of it. You could get blinded in a second. Settings, you got the sleep timer. So like how, how much do you want it to like sleep? I have mine on off, but it goes up to two hours, 120 minutes or one hour, 30 minutes and so forth. So basically 15, 30, 45, 60, 90, 120. Your menu timer goes for like 15 seconds. So basically this would go away in 15 seconds right now or 240 seconds, however long that is. High altitude mode, just take a listen. The fans will basically work if you live in a high altitude such as Lake Tahoe, Big Bear, Utah, etc. Now if we go to HMI CEC, Basically, this is will give your TV or HDMI or home assistant, whatever power it needs to do to turn it on. So there's HDMI CEC, device auto power off if it's disconnected, auto language change, and HDMI 2 arc. Power shutdown setting. So basically, when you turn it off with the button on itself or with the button on your remote, this is what it will either do. It will either shut down completely, which I currently have because I need this to last for years, or suspended. If you don't know what suspended is, basically when you turn it off, it's not actually off. What's just turned off is the feed of the lasers. With shutdown, basically the lasers are shut down, the air filters are shut down, everything is shut down itself. 
An information is basically your license agreement, privacy statement, projection operation log information if anything goes wrong. I can ask with this button right here, what's the weather today? What is the weather? Right now in Corona, it's 57 degrees and sunny. Today, it'll be sunny with a forecasted high of 60 and a low of 34. So this is on theater mode, so it would obviously sound like that. And basically, it would just show up like that in a different format than the actual Google TV. What about tomorrow? Tomorrow in Corona, it'll be mostly sunny with a high of 64 and a low of 36. So the volume tab will basically look like that at the bottom of your screen. If I go up, I'll go up, down. Now, if you click on the Bluetooth tab, it will say Bluetooth speaker mode on or Bluetooth speaker mode off. And what this does, which means that you have to pair your remote, no, not your remote, your phone or whatever device you want to put on that speaker in order to actually use it. Other options that you are able to do, you gotta see YouTube recommended, blah, 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 this, 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 that, that, that. Uh, this is the exact same thing that you see on Google Chromecast, Roku, etc. Now, if we go to the right, I will say live. So this is basically just free live TV. You can see that there's like NBC News, CNN, CBS News, New York, all of those random stuff that you see that you don't have to get an antenna for, except you just have to pay for Wi-Fi. Yeah. Even though a 10 is a little bit better, especially with learning the history of analog TV, I could see. Yeah. In shop, well, you could buy or rent movies like Oppenheimer, which is a Golden Globe winner. Die Hard, Trolls, The Hunger Games, The Holiday, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to Discover. And the Discover tab is basically things like Sound of Freedom, uh, Percy Jackson, awesome. Uh, the Illusionist, The Cracker, all of these random other top picks that they have available for you. Your watch list if you are logged in, documentaries. Basically, if you are bored, just go to the Discovery tab and you will discover things that you should actually watch. Apps. You have to be logged in into your Google account in order to get apps. So basically, it's projected settings, apps and online meetings, project firmware updates, YouTube, Netflix, all those streaming services are on there. Now, there is a few that I did download such as a VLC file manager plus and these other ones are just on here because they are. So if I go to VLC, okay, so basically I had a client and the, the goal with their video was basically drone footage of the area. I am FAA part 107 licensed, so don't go coming looking for me, things like that. So if you have a USB and you're trying to play on this projector specifically, will not let you with this because it will not identify it as a VLC of video player or photo player or whatever the name is. So you have to download a VLC file manager plus and you have to log in with your Google account in order to get it. Now I am going to mute the laser. I'm going to mute the laser and I'm going to plug in my USB and we will also take a listen at the sound. And keep in mind this is with all my lights in my room turned on. I did try this out in pure daylight. This thing works perfectly. Again, it's probably because it's laser and not a lamp bulb. And if you're wondering or like asking me, should I get a laser, a lamp bulb, or LED? Honestly, I, I had to call like five, 10 people to tell me which one to get. It's laser. Because laser will last for years to come, about a decade long. Meanwhile, for a lamp, you have to keep on buying a new lamp, which costs usually around $100 to $150. And it burns out faster because it's generating more heat. Laser doesn't really generate that heat, that much heat. As you can hear at the, the fan, is low. Now, if you have LED, yeah, it's better. But it's, again, it's, it's still using something to project it far away. To simplify it, it's basically LED is generating the same heat as lamp almost but you still have to change it out now for laser you can't change it out because you have to discard this whole projector unfortunately but this is a piece of history you would have to discard the whole piece of projector after 10 12 years after it's like lifespan and yeah that's a disadvantage with this but it doesn't generate that much heat therefore it lasts for a lot more like longer years instead of having to buy a bulb every few months and then Okay, so we have the lasers turned on now. 
And now it says File Manager Plus. Open File Manager Plus to open USB, blah, blah, blah. I'll click on Cancel. Now we are here in VLC and it will basically detect video, audio, playlist, history, browsing, other. So if you have like soundtracks, artists, albums, genres, tracks, history, or even a video, well, it will work. Okay, so we will take a listen into each mode so you can know what it sounds like. Hopefully it comes through the camera. I have no clue, but yeah. Theater. And this is what it looks like when I turn off the light. Okay, so which one sounds the best? And again, that is from a USB. That is not on YouTube. So it's like, here, let me zoom in. That thing looks high quality. Also, my client, you guys are awesome. Okay, anyways, this is what it looks like when it is in the dark. Now, if I turn on the lights again, basically it would just be looking like exactly what I was showing you a little bit earlier. So if we go to YouTube, Basically, it's what you expect a projector to do. Play videos, listen to whatever you want, movies, TV shows, whatever it is. The best part though, this thing actually has a speaker inside of it. Because other projectors that I have actually tested before, those speakers, they don't have a speaker on the front. So that is a big advantage with this thing. All right, there's also CES right now. It's like January 8th that I'm filming this and they have CES going on. I, apparently I'm not old enough. Hopefully when I'm 18 I can go to go there. And basically we will, we're already building a community too. So you guys are awesome too that's watching this. Um, yeah, basically this is what it looks like. So if we look at this right here specifically, at just the videos, YouTube, basically it's, it's again, what you find on a Google TV or Roku and you're playing it on there. Now, again, there's HDMI 1, HDMI 2, ARC, whatever it is, HDMI CEC. 
So I will just do like a couple screen tests because this is pretty much what the projector does and I just want you to know like, like I'm gonna let you know. This projector is awesome. I wasn't paid for this, I wasn't whatever it is. This projector is awesome because I've tried other projectors before this. They either one sucked, two there's no speaker so I have to buy another speaker, things, things like that. Now there is an audio out, there's an audio out on this thing. But you need to use the audio out cable and all this other stuff in order to actually have from the audio out fiberglass cable to your DJ if you have a wedding. Or, or, listen to this, or if you have a Bluetooth device and it's in the 21st century, buy, buy a Bluetooth adapter, connect it through this, through HDMI, and you'll still have audio. Trust me, it's a lot more money saving than using audio out, unless you have an audio out device that you could plug it into or whatsoever it might be. Okay, so from the look of this, we, we see the McKinley Street grades. Oh yeah, I just filmed that today, so let's go ahead. The city of Corona invested in the McKinley Street grade separation project through funding from the state of California and other grants. Construction started March 14, 2022, and it is expected to be completed by the middle of this year. While residents experience heavy traffic congestion daily, the city says this should relieve that very issue and mobility for both motorists and pedestrians, as well as improve emergency response times, air quality, and noise. For more information about this project, go to McKinleyUpdates.com. I'm Regan Villanueva with Regan Lee Films Media. Back to you. LS300 is great for you let me know in the comments down below and let me know all the questions that you have because I want to answer your questions and if you have any other like family members wondering about this thing just leave it in the comments down below I'll, I'm literally gonna try my best to give you everything that I know because I actually have this they never paid me for this and I'm giving you this because there's no other videos about this vi about this thing like in this video format so I'm giving it to you. And hey, subscribe if you really want more videos like this about like smart home technology. Because again, this is smart home. You can actually ask Google to turn this thing on and off. I believe, I didn't test it. I believe because it has Google Assistant on it. But this projector is awesome. That's why I have it. That's why they never paid me. But I mean, I mean, it's made in the Philippines. I'm Filipino. Um, Yeah, okay. And to power it off, you just, Press the power off switch. And again, mine is set to shut down. So it's actually shutting down right now. It is not suspended. Subscribe for more videos.